Well, hello everyone. I'm Lori Sagawa and I'm your host today. We're actually the presenter for Ikigai, Purpose, Passion, and Power. And I'm so glad and thankful that each one of you are here. It's a Zoom, um, a Zoom workshop and many people registered. And if you would leave your comments for those of you that are here to the end, that would be great or put them in the chat. I'm just so glad that you're here. So thank you so much for coming. I'm more than honored and thrilled that you are here. I was, I'm a baby boomer, so you can um, calculate my age, but I grew up in the 60s when it wasn't good, a good time to be Japanese. And I wanted nothing to do with it, but actually I didn't really realize I was different until my classmates pointed out to me, it seemed like, you know, you have funny eyes and, you know, your hair is black and, you know, you, you kind of, you, and they teased me in the racial, bull, racial prejudice, the bullying and teasing and the even getting punched and hit. But I did not want that to, to shape who I was. So I grew up as a farmer's daughter, worked very hard. And my parents taught me the, the value of hard work. And although I didn't like it, now I can appreciate what the, the lessons they were trying to teach us. They wanted us to be good, honorable citizens. And really they were trying to show us the way of the warrior, the samurai code of ethics. They said, be honest, be courteous, be courageous. And every all of those principles they would tell us but they also did it by demonstration so we worked very hard every summer and even during the spring and fall and a little bit in the winter to help support the berry farm because I knew that the connection between crops money and food and so that taught me about the value of money and hard work and I I worked very hard but I didn't like it but I was a, a very good student got good grades, I did very well in school, and I was a cheerleader, but then when I went off to college, I thought, you know, I'm going to learn what my parents said about me, because I had a two-year requirement for a language, and I chose Japanese, because I wanted to know what were my parents saying behind my back, or so that I couldn't understand. I did understand a few words, and you you people out there that know Japanese, okane means money and takai means expensive and baka means maybe something's missing up there. So we learned a few words, but I wanted to learn more. And so I did. And I, we, I graduated with a degree in art, worked at the Tacoma Art Museum. And my mentor was an international designer and she loved Japan, had studied and worked there. But she always says, no, Lori, you would love Japan. You are more Japanese than I realized. And I didn't really think I had a lot of connections because we grew up in an all white community. She goes, I think you should go there. I think you would really like it. And so as a new bride, my husband and I went to Japan for a little over a month and I fell in love with the country because it was just so familiar and people had look kind of looked like me they didn't dress dress like me or speak like me but i felt that kinship with them so i was very um, very happy and very comfortable to be there but then um, what happened is when we went there we uh, we made arrangements to meet my father's side of the family the cousins and that's the paternal side and so when we went to japan we actually met our relatives and we did so many things. It was just wonderful. Our friend took it to Japan to have everything, to have this family photo put into these little china plates. So we, each one of us received a china plate with two matches. <laughs> and so uh, my mom said, oh, this is a great product. Why don't we bring it to the U.S.? Well, she never did. But uh, growing up in rural America, rural Washington, it wasn't a I just didn't like it. So I just decided that um, I would, I'd have to live with it because I couldn't change the way I looked. And I learned alongside my parents how to work hard. I was a far, you know, as I mentioned, I'm a farmer's daughter. So we worked hard every day. And if it's the raining, we'd still have to go out there and pick the berries. And after everybody left, if we still, there were still rows to be picked, we went out and picked them. So I learned about hard work and 
that's my background. Grew up and was a cheerleader, uh, worked hard to show how trustworthy and how loyal and how what good citizens Japanese Americans could be. So that was my upbringing. And I uh, just put that Japanese aside for a long, long time until, and I'll share that with you later, what, how I got back into my Japanese heritage. But now it is my happy place. And I, I love being Japanese and just wanted to share with you my intention for this seminar is to share with you about ikigai and iki if you want to say eek like mouth a mouse you go eek like that's not ikigai it's ikigai that's japanese so when i talk about ikigai kotobushido and gambaru and that's what's going to be in the master class in september so that is my background and i will uh, it's there's not much more to that except i you know, I took Japanese in high school, I mean, in college, because I wanted to know what my parents were saying about me and around me. I didn't, I couldn't understand what they're saying. And they'd say, they talk Japanese to each other intentionally. But I learned a few words like okane means money. Um, baka means there's something missing out there. And takai means expensive. So those are the words I learned. But I started learning more once I took and studied Japanese in college. So that's my background. Oh, well, uh, just to let you know, so Lee down in the in the comments there said that he was learning Japanese also. So that's super interesting as well, Laurie. Yes, it is. It's not easy, is it? <laughs> it is not easy. But if you so, grew up with it, it would be much different. So, so, so of course, for those of you who do not know, uh, Lori's journey has been um, uh, very influential, of course. She aims to inspire, but she is a survivor of uh, four car accidents uh, to date. <laughs> and she's uh, um, a survivor of a, a, a traumatic brain injury because one of the, um, unfortunately, one of the car accidents caused that. And she, so she, she really used these principles to get her life back on track and to accomplish what she wanted to also. So, so very inspirational indeed. Well, going through it was not inspirational, but now looking back, uh, it, it doesn't happen to you. It happens for you and out of anything you can find good. And that's what I did. I looked for the good in my situation because I was in chronic pain and um, a lot of things going on, but I survived. So I can go to the next slide. Oops. So what happened was I the regular college and then going taking Japanese. And then after I took Japanese, I was an art major in college and worked for the Tacoma Art Museum in Tacoma, Washington. And my, the mentor, my mentor, who actually was a curator, said, you know, Lori, you would really like Japan. I think that you ought to go there. So as a young bride, my husband and I went to Japan. It was back in the 80s when there, you could get almost, oh gosh, 300 yen per dollar. And now it's about half of that. But we enjoyed it. I love Japan. I love being around. I just felt so at home. I don't know how to explain it because I was raised in an all Caucasian community. So I just didn't have much exposure to Japanese people. And when I went to Japan, it was such a wonderful experience and I loved it. And I've made many trips back. It's my happy place. So I w we went to Japan and found out that uh, this, the, we went to this historical procession, I'll call it not a parade, because it's very solemn. They play music and they had over 2,000 people dressed in period attire. So if you have a would like to go to Japan, if it's on your bucket list, this happens in October. It is, it is amazing. 2,000 people and they're all dressed in different period of time. And this happened to be Tomoe Gozen. She was an awesome female samurai warrior and not many people know about her. And in fact, I didn't even realize there were female samurai warrior, warriors until I saw her. She was so strong and regal and 
her her demeanor just left quite an impression on me. But I, after that, we met our Japanese cousin, my father's Japanese cousin in on the island of Shikoku. And so that was wonderful. Uh, they gave us a copy of our family crest, which is called a kamon. And I didn't realize the significance of it until later in life so that they gave this to us and i go domo arigato gozaimasu thank you very much and i didn't realize how special this crest was um just being in japan was wonderful and i have so many fond memories of when we met our sagawa my father's cousins i saw so many and experienced so many family traits like the laugh we call it the sagawa turtle because we all laugh and especially my dad and and i heard that when i was there and i saw people that looked like our family but yet we were an ocean apart and cultures apart but they one cut two cousins that looked almost exactly alike and they both smoked and they were slight and they he thought he looked like the cousin here in the states and i showed the cousin in the state his picture and they thought yeah we look alike and it was very very interesting and have many many fond room memories but we had to pack our bags and leave and um, also packed away our some of our memories but it always stayed with me i just that little seed of japanese and Jap and the culture just left a big impression on me. And so that was the start of my journey, but I didn't take it as seriously as later. And so I will go to the next um, slide. And we're gonna, today we're gonna talk about Ikigai. And as I should, said, that is one of my intentions for this webinar. I'm so excited that you're all here. I'm very honored and you'll be glad that you attended because you will get receive a workbook, workbook for Ikigai. And it's uh, uh, quite detailed, but once you get it, read about it and see the workbook and you'll, of course, during the three-day challenge, we will I will speak more about Ikigai and show you some examples of people that have found their Ikigai I worked with women in the prison who did not have their ikigai. And it was quite, it actually is quite sad to see so many women being misguided, but I was there and um, I helped them find their ikigai if they wanted to learn, <laughs> that was it. But then as life happens, we are married, we raised two young boys and time goes by so quickly when they are young and they're grown. And now I have grandchildren that are range from 10 to 16. And so that's really exciting is to see uh, future generations and just cherish each moment, especially you, Mark, you have a young boy, son, and it goes by so fast. It really does. And now that we have grandchildren, I remember they were really small and we were holding them and carrying them around. And now they're, they're driving. Some, two of them are driving now. So that's very, very exciting. But before they came, what happened to me is I was rear-ended twice, not once, but twice. One was in 2005 and 2007. And it was a rear end accident, even though it was just a rear end accident, I just, it affected me and it affected me in not a very good way, especially one on top of the other. It was like, it was, it was more of an impact, more than double the impact, I would say. So I sustained a traumatic brain injury. And this is what my life was like. I was, I was, I felt worthless, unimportant, uh, uh, especially unproductive because I was in chronic pain on this side of my body and I felt useless, pointless, lack of purpose. I just didn't know which way to go because there wasn't a lot I could do. I, when I would drive, sometimes I would get lost and that, so I didn't drive very often. And that chronic pain kept me from doing a lot of things, but I worked my way back. And not only did I do that, I had to face my fears. So it didn't happen for not because I was really afraid of doctors. When I was young, we had the family doctor. He's probably about 80 years old. And he'd say, we go up to his crickety old office up these stairs and 
we go into his his exam room and he goes well we're going to give you a shot today and this won't take this won't be very bad he goes just count to three and so we go one two three and he go like this one two three and oh my goodness it hurt so much my sister remembered going to having a bath at night and bleeding and she remembers him sharpening his needles back then that's what they did and it was it was scary i even ran away from the nurses at school. They had to chase me down the hall <laughs> to get a shot. Or I tell my mom, no, I, I can't go to school today. I feel sick. So that was what happened to me after those, after the accident, I just felt like, what, what am I going to do? Uh, they didn't know whether or not I would recover. And some of it was up to me. And I was determined not to be in that condition because I was going to have uh, grandchildren. And I didn't want to have, I wanted to enjoy them. So I worked hard. In fact, probably almost a thousand appointments, physiatrist, uh, chiropractor, physical therapy, vision therapy, um, speech pathology, you name it, I did it. And I didn't even know what a physiatrist was until I saw one uh, back in 2007. So that is, uh, we can break now for a little bit if we have any questions that you'd like to ask or comments. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, great stuff. Uh, and <laughs> certainly, you know, like uh, Ikigai, um, I mean, working closely with Lori, Ikigai has really inspired me also to continue uh, down my way, just like the essence of it. And, and also just like... Um, thinking about its deeper meaning and thinking just like it was developed by people in Okinawa over a thousand years ago. I mean, it's just like wisdom personified. Right. And, yes. and it's, and it's amazing to me that, um, that even though Ikigai is not a new concept, it still applies to many of the things that we do on a daily basis also. Right. So yep. That's correct. The, does anybody have any other comments? Greg, uh, Dawood, um, Robin, Randy, Lee, Ron, Jordan. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll go, sure. I'll go on to the next slide. And while I was recovering, I started researching and I decided to write a book in order to overcome traumatic brain injury. And so I researched and wrote for about six years. And finally, the book was complete. I sent it off to the editor and then sent it off to the printer to be printed. And when that, that shipment of books arrived on my doorstep, I thought, yes, that samurai spirit is in me. And then that was 2015. And then later in 16, it went on to Amazon. I had to figure that out going through uh, Ingram Spark. And then in 2018, I was offered a contract from Tuttle Publishing, which was like, it's like the publishers for Asian books, that and Kodansha. But Tuttle especially is from the inter interaction between Japan and the United States. And that's what it was about during the war. That's what Mr. Tuttle did. He started bringing books back and forth to each other's language and culture. And now it covers all many Asian cultures like Korean, Chinese, and Filipino. And they have cookbooks, language, martial arts. So it's very comprehensive. So it was quite an honor for me to receive uh, a contract from Tuttle Publishing. So they designed the cover and the title, but they didn't change much of my original book, which is good. I'm really glad that they didn't do that. I don't know, okay. Can you see the screen? Yep, we can. Okay, great. Because what's coming up on my screen is different. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Um, I'd like to see that screen. So it's showing the book right now, Laurie, the book page. Okay. I wonder why it's not showing. But anyway, we'll go on to the next uh, the next slide.
Okay, and then you see, is this slide showing what it's like to have Ikigai in your life? No, yeah. it's still showing the book, Laurie. Hmm. Cancel. I don't know why all that other is. Hmm. Yeah, uh, you might have to re uh, reshare your screen. So. so oh, I see it there. now. I'm very sorry. Yes. Awesome. I just got a new computer, and so everything <laughs> <laughs> looks different. I had to change so many things. So thanks for being patient with me. And no that problem. is my book. It's available on Amazon, and Mark is going to put the um, the link in the chat. But if anybody has read the book, if you'd like to do, give a little shout out for that, that would be great. If anybody has read it. I can uh, speak to it. So, so I've read it and recommended it. <clears throat> so Lori does a great job um, weaving life stories, her own and others, uh, into each of the themes or topics. So it makes the material much more accessible, I found. I mean, some of these other people I recognized in life, like uh, Daniel Inouye, but most of them I, I had no knowledge of. Um, highly recommend this, yeah. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Would anybody else like to share? Sure, I'll share. Okay. So my name is Ron Hori. I know <clears throat> Lori pretty well. I'm third generation Japanese. I was born in California, so I'm mostly American. But I have the book, and I've read it. What I like, not only does it go into what the seven Bushido pathways are, but the very detailed personal stories that complement all of those seven pathways is incredible. You know, the amount of detail that Lori goes into, and you really get to know how these individuals and families really lived uh, what is taught in the book. And <clears throat> so I have it uh, right next to me. So, you know, Occasionally, if I want some inspiration, because, and also, too, understanding what people, what Japanese and Japanese Americans went through over time and how they survived uh, and even thrived afterwards is, is pretty amazing. So, I highly recommend, no matter what your background is, if, and if you want to learn more about samurai and Japanese culture, I highly recommend it. Thank you, Ron. I appreciate that. And I really did write it as uh, it was my goal because that was what I concentrated on in order to overcome traumatic brain injury. And so I'm really glad that it did. And I had an editor that was uh, great, but he was a taskmaster. He would call me on things. He goes, no, no, no. And he said, well, just think, Lori, this could be in Kino Kuni. And I thought, oh, yeah, right. But it is in Kinokuniya, which is the Japanese bookstore, about 70 in Japan, maybe 10 to 12 in this country, and maybe 10 international Kinokuniyas in the world. So there, it's quite a large book, bookstore chain. And I'm just really thrilled that the book has, has gotten into the mainstream. I'm very happy and proud, and I did not expect this. But it really is a book that could help anyone from any walk of life no matter what your situation is, to give you hope and encouragement and to learn about how other people survived and then thrived after being in the situations that they were in. My parents' generation faced much more prejudice than I did in my parents and actually my grandparents. So I'm very thankful to them that they paved the way to for us to have a better life. So that is Let the Samurai Be Your Guide. I like the title too. Yeah. And thank you so much, Greg and Ron. I appreciate that. You didn't know you'd be called upon, did you? <laughs> <laughs> and what happens when you study Ikigai and you know your path? This is what can happen to you. Focus, success, profession, wisdom, gratitude, vocation, mindful, achievement, knowledge, passion. Because everybody, I believe, is created for a reason. We're not just here 
taking up space on planet earth. we all have a calling on our lives. And that's what I love to do is to show people that you are worth it. And I'm here to help you find your Ikigai so you can thrive. And then not only thrive, you can share it with other people. And so with Ikigai and the Kota Bushido, the, the moral framework for a person's life, and then Gambaru, never to give up at the end, is the coaching program that I offer to people. And we're going to be doing a three-day challenge and then also a masterclass after that. So this is much better than the condition I was in in 07. I was such a mess. But then after I found out what my purpose in life was, then I started thriving. And then meeting Mark and Jordan, helping me on LinkedIn, which I, I love. I just wanted to get involved in LinkedIn, but I didn't know exactly how. So they have they have shown me and... Because of them, I may, I'm sharing this with you today. So thank you, Mark and Jordan. It takes a village. <laughs> it, it, it's our pleasure, Laurie, to support you in any way, shape, or form. Because we know that uh, this stuff has been uh, um, really, really impactful for many, many people. Not only for uh, um, uh, the, ja the wonderful Japanese people, obviously, but for everyone in the world needs to... Uh, like like Lori, you've always told us, right? Like you've always like Lori has always told us this. If any, if everybody in the world applied what the ancient samurai or what the uh, people in Okinawa know to uh, the last letter, apply the principles, the world would be a different place. And yes. so, so yeah, it, it's very very true. Mm -hmm. It's also I just wanted to add on to that. It's also very interesting that. Since Laurie's been sharing about Ikigai and things like that, that it's become much more mainstream mm. on LinkedIn. The likes of Richard sure. Vanderbloom and uh, some big influences have suddenly started speaking about Ikigai and all of this kind of thing, which hadn't been seen before. So the message is really getting out there, Laurie. So it's incredible to see and people are really starting to talk about it and understand it a bit better and trying to learn about it. It's, it's a very... It's a very buried subject, but it should be something which is forefront of everyone's mind. Yeah. So thank you for educating me on it because I hadn't necessarily heard of it. So just wanted to appreciate you as well. Oh, thank you. So this is what your life can look like. And it can start today when you start studying about Ikigai. You're probably already doing that to some, some shape or form. This is the analysis, your Ikigai. And it has to do with four pillars, your passion, profession, mission, and vocation. And when they intersect together, that is your Ikigai. And the workbook, which will be uh, sent, will show that. You can print it out and start working on your own Ikigai. It's from Okinawa, Japan, and it combines Iki, which means life and Gai is value. So... It's usually translated as life's purpose and refers to having a happy life every day, when to use it. And as I said, the French call that raison d'etre. When to use it? Actually, anytime. When you feel lost, when you feel like something's missing in your life, you don't feel happy, or be perhaps making a, a big decision. So take your time. The more detailed and the more specific it can be, the better and the more accurate it will be for you. And it starts with four, as I said, the four pillars, what you love, what you're good at, what the world needs, and what you can be paid for. And what's interesting about uh, the Okinawans is they feel that what you can be paid for, I mean, what the world needs is very important. It's almost more important than what you can get paid for because they say that if, it's, if the world doesn't need your ikigai or your gift, then it really is an ikigai. So the next step is to connect your answers from above to find the intersections. And that will be in the workbook, which you can download now, or we will send it to you. Mission, passion is what you love and what you're good at. Mission is what you love and what the world needs. Vocation is what the world needs, plus what you can be paid for. And the last is profession, what you're good at and what you can be, be paid for. So all, your ideal Ikigai will involve all of the sections. 
And so don't worry because it's, it's a process and it can always be fine tuned. And I would recommend doing it in pencil when you work on it. And this is also going to be in your workbook. So you can see that. So if it doesn't have all four pillars, then it really isn't considered a true Ikigai. Mm. And I did, I would like to mention just a little bit about um, Ikigai and it's, they've done a study that on, around the equator is called the blue zone. And there's five communities in the world. And one of them is Okinawa, Japan. And you, they say to eat more vegetables and there are more centenarians in Okinawa than anywhere else on the in the world. Right here in the United States is Loma Linda, California, the, the Seventh-day Adventist community. You find faith in healthy eating. And one thing I forgot to mention in Okinawa, one of the pillars that they, or one of their idea, principles of Ikigai is called Hachi Harabu. That means eat until you're only 80% full. That means don't stuff yourself, <laughs> you, yeah. which is, I think, a very, very interesting. And then the third is Ikari Greece, be well-rounded. The fourth is from Nicoya, Costa Rica, have purpose and hard water. And Sardinia, Italy, different rhythm, exercise, and don't take medicines. I think that's medication. I think that's very interesting. One woman, I, I think she was from Italy, said that she never ate a bite of meat in her life, which I thought was very interesting. And she said that's why she believes that she's living so long and well is that she doesn't eat meat and i don't believe the uh, seventh-day adventists do either lori so yes. there's a there's a good mention in there in the comments uh, from lee he said when he eats too much it tends to slow his motivation down and he doesn't tend to get so much things done like do you have anything to add on that are you are you talking to me no, uh, Laurie, uh, the okay. question, do you have anything to add for Lee's comment there? Um, no, well, that, that's what they believe in Japan is that you eat until you're only 80% full. And when you overstuff, you're, you're working your body, your body is working extra hard and it slows you down. And so that could be, you know, the, the Hachi Harabu could be something that you might consider just to eat, you know, like don't eat every meal like it's Thanksgiving. Or like at the at the country buffet, you just eat it for you. <laughs> eighty percent full. Especially as we age, I noticed that as I have been aging, I can't eat as much as I used to, and I can't, and that's probably good. I don't eat as much as I used to. But if you had any other comments, Lee, you can add. Oh, thank you so much. I've been experimenting with changing my diet and eating less meat has been very helpful. Eating more green things has been very helpful for my energy. And so I've noticed that when I stuff myself, I'm just really tired and I have to be more careful of that. That's a yeah, good notice. That's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your comment. I appreciate that. So this is a picture of the little ladies on, on Okinawa. And they say that they don't really, I, t I emailed or actually I messaged somebody about Okinawa. He had spent some time there and he said that when he went there, he asked around, what is Ikigai? And they couldn't explain it to him. It's, and I think it's because the Japanese way you learn by example, you learn by doing, you learn by, and that's how my parents taught me. You just yeah. learn by working alongside the parents and like, in school, the, ja the the school children are the janitors. So they learn about proper respect and about cleanliness by being cleaning up after themselves. They don't have janitors in their schools. The kids are, so they don't make messes. They don't they don't mar up the walls and kick the th everything around or litter. You don't see garbage cans in Japan. They're very. You, it's really interesting. You have to kind of carry your garbage with you wherever you go because they don't have garbage cans that I saw. And even if there was a garbage can, especially in the bathroom, they said, don't put your trash here. <laughs> I think that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they teach uh, responsibility uh, through action. Exactly. Yes. When, are you next, when are you next traveling to Japan? 
Oh, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Actually, we're taking our two older grandchildren uh, right after Christmas. And then after that, I'm in the beginning. And that I put that out in my email um, beginning trip to go to Japan. The last two years we've gone to just got flown into Osaka and gotten the shuttle to our hotel and basically stayed in the hotel because I just didn't want it complicated in a couple days we well, actually three days we had we hired a tour guide and he took us out to different places mm -hmm. and then two other days I arranged for a volunteer guide and we would take the train and go that way but it's it's a mm -hmm. wonderful experience it's yeah. hard to imagine um it's easier to think about Japan and the samurai if you uh, participate in the food and the sounds and the the uh, everything about it, the the this the whole ambiance is beautiful, mm -hmm. and they don't uh, like you won't see fifty different colors of houses. It's very homogenous, just like the people. They're, the population is very homogenous, and you will un understand what uh, more about the culture, especially when you eat the food. And they say that one of the secret ingredients is love that the, they take so much pride and uh, love and pride in what they do. And even at the hotel, there were the, these little ladies that would make the rice balls and that was their ikigai. And they, was just, <laughs> <laughs> they just wanted to make sure that I got the onigi I needed. And they said, which one and how much of this? And they only put one piece of uh, seaweed around it. And I said, could I have two or three? Because I don't want to get my fingers sticky. <laughs> they gave it to me, but they just take so much pride and care and it really shows it it shows in in their food it shows in their uh, how the the streets are almost immaculate i only saw two homeless people in the city of kyoto the whole time i was there for three weeks so it's a very different culture and if you haven't been there i highly encourage you to put it on your bucket list and if you would like um i i do have we'll be having more information and and seminars about traveling to Japan because it really is my happy place. And I'm so happy when I'm there and I'm just so glad when I get to go. So, 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 uh, so just to clarify, so, so Lori every year, she's going to start doing this again. She's, she organizes a group, uh, like last time it was like 15 or no, there's all, there was nine of us, only nine. Okay. All like only nine, but uh -huh. th this group is going, bigger and bigger every year and so it's like she organizes these amazing tours and she goes to these amazing places having to do with bushido having to do with ikigai having to do with gambaru and all these things just like sort of like like an immersive experience so um i think uh laurie you were thinking about maybe april of next year right yes so, 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 if, if anyone here or, or if anyone uh, watching the recording is even remotely interested about knowing these kind of arrangements to go to actually go in Japan and living it in full impact mode, um, please we encourage you to get on a coffee chat with Lori and uh, work things out from there. So, thank you, Jordan. And that is my ending slide, Gambate Kurasai. Gambate is from the word Gambaru, which is try your hardest, do your best, never give up, and go for broke. So the imperative of that is Gambate Kurasai. So I like to tell say people, you know, you can go from one to 10, you can say Gambate Kurasai, or you can go Gambate Kurasai. That'd be if I were five. And about a 10 would be Gambate Kurasai. That, that's what they do in their games and also their when they take the test for entrance exams. And it's also what they use to encourage each other after the tsunami and the earthquake of 2011. And yeah. also just recently, about two years, year and a half ago, they had another one of those tsunami wave things near Kanazawa. Mm -hmm. So never yeah. give up, never, never, ever give up because there's always hope, there's always a way. Yeah. The yin and the yang. If you want to lose weight, there's somebody over on the other side that wants to, a health coach that wants to help you. 
And same with finances. You want help with finances? There's somebody there that is trained and wants to help you. So you, by you being here, you are fulfilling my Ikigai of sharing the Kota Bushido and Ikigai and Gambaru. And I just would love for this message to go even further. Just think about our world. You know, we're looking for leaders. And if all, if people would adhere more to that, would we have, would our, would our world be in the situation that it's in? Would we have graffiti on the walls and killing and shooting and stealing and having to lock our doors because people are trying to get in? And, and I would say that to the women in the prison, I was there for about 10 years, 10 or 12 years. And I did that because I knew what it was like to struggle. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, it wasn't fun, but I had, it gave me more empathy about people that were struggling. And so I, that's what I did. Yeah, and, and one thing about the Japanese culture, it really transcends the whole world. Like, uh, um, uh, what's the phrase, Lori, that they repeat in restaurants when you go in? Oh, hi, Irashai. Irashai. Yeah, exactly. So, so, so there's this restaurant in Vancouver that had, it's actually a branch of a real, um, ramen place in they actually have 21 um uh, branches of this restaurant in japan but they have one in vancouver the best ramen that you'd ever taste i mean oh. in vancouver uh, of course it was pricey it was like maybe 30 canadian dollars uh, each bowl it was but it, it was absolutely amazing and then uh like the environment was always like um like you can see it in their eyes that they were fulfilling their ikigai by by serving, by people uh -huh. appreciating the food, by people. And it was a little place, no word of a lie. You had, Every single time that we went, it was like a half an hour line to get in. So, <laughs> so yeah, I, I mean, just go show you. It, it, I mean, um, uh, like really thinking about all of this information um, really took me down like a memory lane when just like sipping that ramen uh, and it goes down your throat and then the, the waiter or waitress says, 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 is there anything else that we can do for you? But they they felt like so sincere, right? They felt like so sincere, not not like uh, some of the waiter and waitresses, like okay, what do you want? Okay, you know, like, <laughs> uh, but 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 this is like okay. The now I understand. This is their mission. This yeah. is their ikigai. This is what they want to do. They they really feel the passion inside to do to do this, right? So so yeah, for sure. I... And in Japan, they don't you don't tip them because they would consider that an insult. Oh wow! That is their yeah. job, and the, and so it's kind of interesting. Oh yeah. Yeah. So okay. that ends it, and this is my contact. And yeah. at this time, I'd love to um, open it up for questions. So if you want to turn your cameras on, I'd love to see your faces. Yeah, and... exactly. Actually, if if anybody's against it, we'll we'll start with Lee. So, uh, if you can let us know what you do specifically, and how like um, how you found your ikigai and how you continue to find your ikigai. Uh, sure, absolutely. Thank you so much, Jordan. I appreciate it. Um, what I do is I help people make more meaningful relationships in their personal and professional life. And I found my ikigai because I struggled with making those meaningful relationships all of my life. <laughs> and so I think it's it's with the ikigai in the sense that I've been through this process of feeling like I'm useless and rejected and everyone else has figured it out, but I didn't know what to do. And so after I figured that, well, my purpose is to understand more about myself and help other people connect I leaned into that and the world does pay for it. They do need it. So many people say that I'm terribly lonely. They're terribly lonely. So I mm. help them with that. Oh, wow. Incredible, Lee. So would you say that icky guy is an important part of someone's business in their process? Oh, yes, absolutely. It's a, essentially the best word that I have in the thinking, thinking of it and watching this presentation is my essence, the essence of me 
And I put that into my passion, the work that I do, the people that I help. And if you don't have that, then your business is is really going to suffer because it's, I think my business is a reflection of me. And so I, I really do think it is important to incorporate Ikigai into that. So, so um, how do you think you are going to continue to incorporate Ikigai based on what you've learned in this presentation? Um, I'll continue to follow my passion and know that I'm helping people and get paid for it. <laughs> All those things. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. And, and, and it's so true that a lot of people are not there in their mindset yet, right? Mm -hmm. And and once they break past that barrier uh, to actually find the Ikigai and have some self-worth, then like it all starts with yourself, right? As you said, uh, oh, thanks yeah. so much for your contribution. Mm -hmm. um, if so, I, if, yeah, I could just share, if I could just share yeah. a little bit more. Go ahead. I, it may seem like I'm on the other side of it or something like that, but I know that there was a, it was a lot of struggle and a lot of facing the fears like Lori had said about being rejected, feeling me personally, feeling rejected by people my entire life and having to present my business and myself to other people and dealing with that fear of rejection. And so Ikigai can be really powerful when it comes to facing that fear because you're, you're going to have to do it as a business owner, just period. Uh -huh. Absolutely. 100% agree. Lori, what's your opinion on that? Oh, I think that's beautiful. And that he's found his passion. He's found his Ziki guy. And I'm so glad that you're here and that we've connected because the more people that know about it, I think the the, the better our world will be. I think our world is going to be a, a much, just imagine if everyone found their ikigai and what the world would be like they wouldn't have so many so much crime and people being on medication and pills and and actually working in the prison i saw a lot of that people that did not know what their purpose in life was so i was i was there to help them yeah for sure so thank you awesome. so uh let's hear from greg um how about you greg uh what specifically do you do and i know that you've been uh, a friend of Lori's for a long time. Um, so what, what specifically are you doing? How do you continue to show and find your Ikigai? Yeah, so I, <clears throat> I coach and train uh, software development teams oh, wow. uh, in, in management and leadership. Also, I was one of those people for a long time, and I've worked in all those roles, uh, and I've led programs myself. Uh, so... So I try to find ways for people to be successful in the workplace. Uh, and a lot of it has to do with, you know, facing the reality of kind of where we are. And then one thing I will say I specialize in, I can usually replan the work and help people take ownership of it and feel good about it to get to whatever deliverable they're trying to get to. Wow. Um, so I came across the Ikigai figure, just the basic figure, almost a decade ago. Uh, but I, I don't I think I only touched the surface of you know the potential of adopting it, like in the work I do. Uh, now I'm starting to see ways that I could. Um, mm. Awesome, awesome. That's really me. Incredible. Thank you for sharing, Greg. Lori, do you have anything to add to Greg's uh, notes there? Well, I think his journey is great, you know, being one of them and then actually helping to lead them and seeing the value of Ikigai, even though you heard about it maybe 10 years ago, uh, you're, it's, it's still valid today. And I believe even it was it was developed in 795. So that's a long time ago, but it's still valid today and it can help people just like the rest of the Jap, I'm, my opinion, maybe I'm biased, but the rest of the Japanese principles, like even Kaizen, that's mm. a good one. Yeah, so Thanks, I can add one more thing. Yeah. So uh, Gambaru and lots of Japanese culture is widely used in my field. This is a book, um, Life Lessons from Isao Yoshino uh, from Toyota uh, Motor uh, Motor Company. So, so even though in software engineering and product development, there's a lot of uh, adoption of Japanese terms and principles, uh -huh. but not necessarily the intention. 
or the purpose. Uh, and I and I increasingly can see now that's what's missing. Mm, beautiful, beautiful. Thank yeah, you. For sure. Okay, uh, uh, Dawood, how about you? How did you find today's session? Any feedback from it? And also, how do you um, plan to continue to find your Ikigai? Well, this has been, uh, I'm 52. And I started asking these questions when I was 16. Um, and yeah, the whole life journey, that's, that's fascinating. I feel like I've lived five or six different lives. Um, so I've been searching for, you know, for purpose for my e guy for decades. Um, and that's searching for it because I'm a constant seeker. I feel as though I've really found a depth of purpose within my own life. Yeah. You guys, I mean, you guys know, you've been kind of connecting with me a little bit. You know what I'm about? I'm a brand strategist right now who focuses on helping people find their inner purpose specifically founders and business owners, entrepreneurs, and then to take that purpose and align it with their brand. And so not only does that create a fulfilling life built around purpose that establishes meaning for one's life or a founder's life, let's say, but it also then infuses that into the brand which can impact the team. It can impact all the employees. It, can, it certainly can have impact on the customers. It then positions the brand so that there's some depth to it, that then the right customers want to connect to because they themselves may be in their own process of looking for meaning and purpose. So that's what I do. <laughs> you guys have got a taste awesome. of that. You know, Mark, Jordan, I've no, yeah. you guys around. Yeah, um, awesome. Mm -hmm. I, where all this comes from in me, is again it's just it's it's my soul's purpose it's why i exist um if i look at my life and, and everything that's gotten me here it, it's the the path of rocks hasn't been straight but there's been a path of rocks to, st to stand on um what i why, why this has become a, a thing for me the last five or six years is that i want i'm raising four children mine are 20 to 14 and, and you know doing between that um, I'm also a full-time single dad. Their mom is in the picture. And what I experience in their friends, what I experience in my nephews and nieces, what I experience in just kids I see at the grocery store or at the park, is that there is such a lack of meaning in their lives yeah. that it could bring me to tears, truthfully. Um, I think somebody's got to do something about it. So the concepts of Ikigai... I think they seem to be, um, not even seem to be, they are very accessible. So, you know, a 14, 16 year old could pick this up and, and really make changes in their lives before they even get to their life. Right. So that's my purpose. My purpose is to make an impact on parents and children through business so that people don't hit 25 years old and want to kill themselves mm -hmm. so that, 43-year-olds don't destroy their families because they didn't look for depth of purpose before they reached their midlife crisis. So that businesses can really serve their community, can really serve their customers. So, uh, you know, I have a, that's how it's all influenced me. I could, by the way, I could go on with this for hours, so I should stop. <laughs> but, yeah. but Lord, I really appreciate um, connecting with you. Yeah, no sharing. problem. Uh, yes. It's, and I, I want to just ask you, Lori, um, any plans at all, and Obviously, um, you know, being my own drum here, any plans at all about trying to bring this into the education system? You know, whether it's just your local school district or having some impact in, with children. Um, I can tell you, last thing I'll say about this is I can tell you reaching children is more on the Internet is more difficult than we think. For, you know, forget about laws and, you know, underage and all that stuff. I, I, I'm, what I'm talking about is if there's any money involved at all, it's got to go through the parents. Because I've worked with companies that have been wanted to target children with their products, but what they don't realize is they really need to be targeting the parents. Mm -hmm. And so I, I just wonder, Laurie, do you have any any idea, any any thoughts about you know bringing this concept to kids? I personally, I don't, but I would be willing to work with someone that does have that inroad into the the education system. Mm -hmm. I did go into the women's um, penal system and 
it's interesting. I'm like 20 minutes from one prison and 20 minutes from the other. It was really interesting how I'm just at the <laughs> right at the crux. And yeah. I never thought I'd be, I was kind of afraid of going into the prison, but there's nothing to be afraid about because if they start acting up, you just call up the guard and say, we need to have a lady removed, but they like to be out of their cells. And so that's, what's really exciting. But I'm at, I'm, I am, I would love to learn more about that because I just feel that Ikigai can change so many lives, especially the young kids. Well, I wonder about even translating your workbook, translating, sorry, that's not the fair word. I wonder about even just offering your workbook as Ikigai for, for teens or Ikigai for mm-hmm. college grads. That, you know, just, that just would be positioning great. it a little differently. That, that would be great. You'll, you'll receive one and um, any feedback you have about how to, maybe I need to do, I don't do the AI part, but to make it so that it would be uh, understandable to younger people, different grades. And, um, and actually my book has been translated into German and now it's being translated into Arabic, but I would okay. really like to see it, you know, more like even Spanish or different languages but I'm not I'm not in charge of that Tuttle is but um, it's exciting because this information good information and good morals never go out of style exactly thank you let's stay yeah, in touch absolutely please yeah awesome awesome so anybody else want to speak uh, how about you Ron um, you've known Lori for a long time um, any any tips or advice on how to incorporate Ikigai in, in your life there? Well, for me, uh, I have never thought about Ikigai. <clears throat> it's a new concept for me, but my, my, my passion is lifelong learning, exploring, growing physically, mentally, spiritually. And I, when I was really young, I was really shy, didn't have any friends. I was, was very awkward, you know, felt like a loner. Uh, but I was okay with that. But then I learned uh, to really expand my possibilities. So one thing I love doing is learning about, well, life in general, but also specific techniques where I can keep expanding my own abilities and not only business, but also personally, physically, I like to work out and also spiritually, mentally, because I have a meditation routine. And also, for those who are willing to listen, sharing concepts and ideas that have helped me. And if somebody is open to saying to getting out of their own, own way, you might say, you know, maybe they say, well, I feel stuck. Uh, well, tell me about that. And we might start a conversation, and specifically, maybe also in business. But I think when you talk about Ikigai, or I know a lot of people from India, or other countries where they they have where they have a definite structure in or philosophy in how they live, and that's probably lacking in America specifically, because you know with the advent of the internet and smartphones and uh, now AI, there's people don't really have principles that they live by, and so I look at Ikigai. It kind of embraces what I do. What I call it my personal passion and learning and growing combining all those areas and also in business and also, you know, helping and working with people who feel the same way and they're open to changing their mindset for one, because I think one thing that really limits, limited me and limits people is their own self-talk and their own limiting beliefs. And, you know, I follow a lot of different coaches and mentors in different areas. So I think it starts with the family like Tawood was saying, parents being an example to their kids. Don't give, you know, don't give a, a tablet to, you know, a two-year-old. Uh-uh. It's not good, not even brain-wise, it's not good to give tablets and phones to young adolescents. It really, it really affects their brain development. And people may not know that. You give them a book, a coloring book. <laughs> like that. Really, That's true. Thing. Or how about to spend time, <laughs> with them, right? To spend time with your kids on the damage yeah. they're doing. They think you know the the cell phone or the tablet is the babysitter for their parents. Uh-huh. If they knew the damage, the lifelong damage it could be affecting their their pity brains, they wouldn't do it. 
so again, there needs to be, you know, kid, the parents, like when I was um, newly <clears throat> a father, I had to read books and think, okay, what does it take to be a father to boys? And actually there was a book on how to be a father to boys. I have two sons, now they're 28 and 31. So, you know, I said, I need to figure this out. Uh, and you'll learn from people who've been ahead of me. So when I when I see that diagram of Ikigai, doing what you like, you know, what you're good at, what the world needs, and being able to benefit from uh, as a business, you know, it's a perfect example of, you know, what I try to incorporate. And also, I wouldn't say balance, because people talk about work-life balance, which is literally impossible. If you're working eight hours a day, there's no way you can spend eight hours with your family. So we call it harmony. You know, if you're if you're with your family, be with your family. Put away the smartphones, no smartphones at dinner, so on. Um, also, too, you know, and when you're at work, work. And when you, and I'm working on being more um, playful, you might say, or relaxing. So if I'm relaxing, relax. You know, don't look for relaxation on YouTube. So I think the Ikigai principle, one of the key principles, I was talking to a woman, not a woman, a CEO from India, but he's also teaching his uh, children, his daughters in grade on principles of living mm -hmm. and really guiding them. So I think, you know, parents have a responsibility and they need to take ownership for what's happening with their kids. Place some limits and boundaries. What a concept, right? Because you hear about these helicopter parents. You know, I could go on and on, but um, it starts at home. Really. Thank you, Ron. Like that was really inspirational. Like Ikigai is going to be something which I'm going to be teaching my young Elijah. Uh, thanks to Laurie and the information she shared and what I've learned, it's really touched me. And I thought what Dawood was saying about connecting ikigai with parents of young children and teaching them through the generations as they grow up i think it could be an incredible opportunity so if anyone else wants to be involved in that project just message dawood and laurie and let's see what we can get organized from there but thank you for sharing that amazing detail and i completely agree with you technology should be placed to the side on certain occasions when you want to spend that vital time with your family or you want to take them on holiday don't feel ashamed to take a break and step away if you need to. So I think that's some valuable messages right there. So thank you. Uh, Laurie, did you have anything to add? Well, I, he's, oops, my, let's see. Oh, thank you, Ron. Um, you know, we are both Japanese American, kind of raised the same era being the baby boomers and you know you the lessons that you we learned from our parents and grandparents really stuck with us and they they taught by doing they, i remember my grandmother taught me so much but she don't didn't speak to me but she just kind of taught by doing and telling me to, to do this and that and we'd be go places but yeah it's really we have that in common so thank you so much ron for sharing that and i think we have one or two other yeah. people that have so uh hello jordan how are you uh you're down with your ikigai grind i see oh yeah <laughs> that's good man um how are ya? i'm good um that's great so uh what did you find that really resonated with you and uh any feedback for the presentation and uh what specifically do you do and how are you going to find your ikigai so I am now a student at BYU Idaho. It's online though, and I'm majoring in technology. And I've been learning Japanese since I was 25. Uh, I've been wanting to learn since I was 15, but I currently learn from a Guzu Udemy and a Japanese Pod 101, and. I do plan on traveling to Japan one of these days. And awesome. I like to, uh, yeah, I, I do like to visit Fukuoka, um, visit, see a Chiyosu University there and see if I want to attend there after I'm done with BYU Idaho. Mm. 
That's awesome. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Great. So uh, uh, thank you so much. Um, any ending words, Lori? Well, that, I think um, Naomi is here if she oh, wants to. Yeah. Oh, oh, hey, Naomi. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, how are you? I didn't hey guys, I'm I'm really good. I'm in Australia at the moment. I actually only cut, got the end of it, so nice to hear you, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've just been really loving listening to everyone's um, stories and how they're incorporating um, incorporating it. But um, is uh, I'm hoping there's a replay from this. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'll send it yeah to you. There, there's a replay for sure. Okay. Awesome. Everybody's email in the chat. Your email and okay. Okay. Make sure I'll we pop it in. Yeah, exactly. Because we want to make sure that I don't know how you registered for that, but hopefully that was done. But also, I want to mention on September 10th through 12th, we're going to have a complimentary three-day challenge, and I hope you all mm. attend. It's going to be great. And okay. again, the, the um. The social tires are going to help me with that, and we're going to have a great day, and that will lead into a master class. And actually, I love master classes that oh, kind yeah. of work into a mastermind is how I like to run things. Awesome. Well, uh, I think we'll end here. Thank you so much for everyone who attended this. Uh, we will forward you the replay. Uh, thank you, Laurie, for the from the bottom of our hearts. It was very insightful. Um, the way you spoke about Ikigai, we can really uh, see the passion that you're completing your Ikigai right now, obviously. Mm -hmm. I so, am. So, so again, if anyone wants to um, grab a coffee chat um, with Lori, the link is in uh, the feed there uh, just to... Yeah. Just chat a little bit more about Ikigai and... And also, if, if if anyone wants to know about how Lori can help you in your life in business also, she'd be more than happy to explore that type of area of our services as well. And of course, the complimentary three-day challenge coming up in September. So uh, anything else to add, Mark? Yeah, no, I think I'll just put like, if you're interested in connecting with Lori, obviously you can find her on LinkedIn, you can find her on Facebook. So I think she's got some links there, Lori, which you were going to share on the screen. Do you have those? I don't have, link? but they are in the, they should be in the chat. That's okay. I will share those. So the links are up the top for the booking a call if you want to just connect there yeah. and have when a chat. We, when we send the um, email out, we'll include the link and then also. Absolutely and the information about the complimentary three-day challenge, which I'd love to see you at. I'd love to fill the room. Uh, and I'm going to be giving more examples. Like Ikigai, I, I, I have a lot of examples of people who have found their Ikigai and what it took. And the one that I just love is Yayoi Kusama, which I, who I did not know a lot about. She's the highest paid female artist in the world. And she's Japanese and 95 and she still paints and draws every day. She found her. Incredible. So Amazing. I, have of, I have a lot of stories to share with you during the three day challenge. Awesome. Amazing stuff. Well, Until when? Well, well, thank you so much uh, for attending. And, and Laurie, thank you so much. And, and thank you, every one of you. It means the world to Laurie. It means the world to us that you uh, took time out of your busy evening. Uh, and, and like this is so appropriate because going into the weekend, this is what we think about, right? We think about uh, spending time with our family. We think about what passion drives us in the weekend. But then when it comes Monday, uh, depending if we're an entrepreneur or or stuck in a nine to five, we go back to work, right? And but it's really good to reflect on these things, especially on the weekend, right? Because uh -huh. this is where we're at home. This is where we enjoy our family. Like, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to live in Mexico here on the beach. And um, it's not like my life is full of 
barbecues on the beach, fun, <laughs> right? But 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 but, I mean, I, uh, uh, but like every weekend, I have a routine, which is a barbecue, family, friends, and we play board games. Uh, we like sequence, right? And, and so it, it it's like really finding you, the the stuff that you like to do. Right, the stuff that you like to do, and of course, to Dawood's point, really instilling our children to do, the, to follow in our footsteps. Not just say do what I do, but actually instilling these kind of principles mm. in our children to, for them this. to grow up in a way so that they can find their own ikigai. Uh, can really, really pave the way for future generations mm-hmm. and and really make. A movement for a better world, right? And yes. and this is why we're here, right? So, I uh, some homework for you guys to do. Okay, so I want you to first of all complete the workbook, right? Obviously, and also um, a daily planner. Try to incorporate some sort of guy in your daily life. Uh, and and try to find your your own ikigai. If you found it, that's good. I continue to do this. But now in the weekend, reflect reflect on gratefulness. Reflect on the type of person that you want to be. The type of person that you that you are. Um, by no means you have to be perfect. Like I, um, sometimes I get angry. And I try to control myself like an, an imperfect person, right? Obviously, I'm not perfect. Um, but just reflect on these principles and try to control those urges that make us less peop- less of a person, so to speak, right? And so, and so this is where action has to seep into our life, right? So always try to find ways to take action. So... Without further ado, thank you so much, guys, for this wonderful workshop here. And we will definitely stay in touch. And, of course, please connect with Lori. Please connect with me and Mark on LinkedIn. And uh, thank you so much. And have a good one. Bye-bye, Thanks, Lori. Thanks, Mark. See you, guys. Thanks, Thanks, everyone, for coming. Have a great weekend.